What's up guys and welcome back to another part in the Tales of Perseria playthrough. So in the last one I really can't remember what we did. Let's see quests. I know we got one part. I, I don't know if it was the last episode but I know we got one part of the elixir for that guy side quest. Um, and then we did that part for Rokuro's side quest where we fought that um, demon that apparently was chipping people's blades and breaking them. But um, but Rokuro being Rokuro, you know, he says his brother can do better, which I'm definitely sure he can. So Rokuro still feels like he's got, you know, ways to go for sure to, you know, match up with his brother. And I believe that's the only thing we did. I don't think we progressed with the story much but um we gotta head to midgand i think that's what that said yeah to check another earth pulse point pirate flag barracuda crew scout but story wise what we did was we went to these um earth pulse points trying to find the next therian which we found one point went there fished up stuff but didn't find a therian and I think this is the second Earth Pulse point we're going to now, since Lafayette can now track them. So let's go ahead and head to Midgan, see what we need to do. We need to go to which port? Zexen, okay. So Zexen, let's go there. And we did one of the new class four administration zones. I forgot about that. Hmm? The boss has given me a message for you. Says there's some sort of nasty demon running around in the Aldina Plains to the east of Logris. Aldino she thought Plains. it might be the one you're looking for. Wasn't the Eastern Highway closed off from Logris? That was only temporary. It's back open now. If you follow the road, you'll reach Stonebury Village. There you'll find one of ours who actually saw the demon. You want to know more? That'd be a good place to start. Got it. Hey, that's the same direction I sent. Give Tabitha our thanks. Blood wings all in the know, as always. It's pretty scary. They pretty much know anybody, especially Velvet. The fact that they know Velvet is pretty scary. It's looking more and more like we're on the right track. We ought to go check out that Bloodwing story. Then let's start by going to Stonebury. Hey, Aizen, did I say something wrong back there? No. I just didn't think we needed to give the Bloodwings any information for free. Huh? He means the Earth Pulse points, kid. We're the only ones who know about them. But aren't we on the same side as the Bloodwings? We're not enemies with them. But I wouldn't go so far as to call them our friends, either. That's just how it goes in the underworld. Things can change at the drop of a hat. A poison hat. But how are they supposed to trust us if we don't show them trust in kind? That messenger knew our faces, even though we'd never met. He was here waiting for us, yep. even though we hadn't told anyone where we were going. You're right! We hardly know the first thing about them, and yet they seem to know every move we make. They could easily sell us out if it struck their fancy. They'll work with us as long as we're a useful ally in their resistance against the Abbey. But the more tricks we can keep up our sleeve, the better. We've got each other's back, but only as long as we hold a knife up our sleeve. That's what counts as trust in the Underworld. That sounds terrible, but at least you can trust that Tabitha's cooking will be tasty. <laughs> Can't argue that. That Mabo Curry, man. This is everyone's Eastern first time Midian. to Stonebury, right? Why was it blocked off? Demons? No, there was a great tornado on the Aldina Plains that swallowed up a whole merchant caravan. Hundreds gone in an instant. The cooling of the climate is causing bouts hmm. of odd weather. 
Thunderstorms, heavy downpours, and the like. Correct. The Abbey is keeping a tight guard on traffic through the affected areas. If it's open now, that must mean the tornado is gone. I wonder what sort of place it is. It's quite lovely. Was it just that there for In the that long? the forest to the east, you can find gemstones, and it's teeming with rare plants and insects. The locals trade only as much meat and hides as they need, and they live peaceful, quiet lives. You sure know a lot about this place. It's where the Norman he first fell in love with grew up. Yen! Please don't embarrass me. Though we are apart the from each exposed. other now, our hearts are still as one. Immediately after you and I made our pact and set off, and fell she fell in love, in love with, with some humans. macho Norman and moved away. What? Why haven't I heard about this? How long have you known? Oh, I don't know. Maybe I found out during my long search for you. Or maybe it was right after we left. I remember leaving something in the village and going back to... Oh, well, not like it matters. It does matter! There's no sense Poor in crying over food. a fickle girl. Come, Stonebury awaits. It's okay, Bianfu. The boys are with you. Let's see, same thing. Oh, oh, so the beast, okay. So that side quest was a uh, part of, um, yeah, part of um, one of these. Really cool design on it too. Like it's like a chimera type because it's got the snake as a tail, but it's very like scorpion-like and has that skull on it. Then the colors, really cool design. I like this one too. Like just the fact that the, you know, where her feet are it's just the the stars really cool that one looks pretty and then of course just regular now this one i don't know if this is supposed to ref like reference kamawana but you can see inside that tree there's a person in it just like kamawana of course it's called dryad so different but still it's kind of funny it's the same thing yeah, we've had some pretty cool looking things. That one's really cool too. Yep, cool. One other thing I forgot to mention on the last one, I, I thought about it right after I had like finished recording the video, but um, I had recently re-downloaded the Tokyo Ghoul game because I, after I read the manga fully, um, I had the urge to just go and kind of play the game a little bit and Oh man, it's it, the game is more frustrating than uh, than I remember it being. Like it's it could have been so much more. Like I, I enjoy it, but only for like twenty minutes, the very first time I loaded it up. That's it. But I do plan on getting the, the achievements Eastern for Plain it, is finally so open for travel. I hear that the people of Stoneberry are alive and well. My husband and I can breathe a sigh of relief. <laughs> I wasn't worried about him at all. He talks tough, but he was really worried. Oh, sorry you don't know who we're talking about. It's his apprentice. What kind of apprentice? My husband's an architect. Even the royal family and the abbey commission his work. He's been at the docks here on a job. He just finished and we're about to return to Logris. These people don't care about all that. Why did your apprentice go to Stonebury? He's young and talented, but a bit eccentric. He said he wanted to help create a new town, so he set off to the frontier. A craftsman has to focus on his work. Creating a new town, ha! He should know his place. But my husband didn't disown him. That boy's fearlessness reminds me of my husband when he was young. So you hmm. understand how he Maybe feels, Maybe look out for it. Uh, I didn't say then. that. If he thinks he has the talent, he's free to do as he likes. But if he doesn't follow through with it to the end, I'll be done with him. Did you hear that? He thinks the boy can do it. If you ever find yourself in Stonebury, go visit that boy's workshop. <laughs> right, I'll do that. <laughs> Sorry about my husband. He can be a real grump. Don't worry about it. I'm pretty used to people like that. Hey, what's that yeah. supposed to mean? Um, nothing. Okay, yep, I figured there'd be something in the end. Let's see what we got. What are you guys talking about? I'm so happy things have been peaceful around the capital. I can come to the harbor to shop without fear. 
I heard that those demons that made a mess of the palace have been wrecking towns all over, though. But Shepherd Artorius and the fine folks at the Abbey are on the job. I bet those demons are quaking in their britches. Let's hope that's the case. No. Of course They're it not. is. Lord Artorius is incredible. The demons have been mostly cleared from the area around the capital. Your love for the Abbey and the Shepherd are great and all, but I'd keep it down. If you keep poking around the bushes, you might catch yourself a snake. Uh, a snake? There's a rage-crazed girl out there mm -hmm. who hates the Abbey. She's a real viper, that one. She sounds awful. That's what I hear. Who are you calling a viper? I love that, man. Whatever she just says, who are you calling a viper, dude? That voice acting was so good for that part. Ah, oh, man, I love Velvet's English voice, dude. Did we have any other masteries? We did, okay. Yeah. Um, we'll put that on. Boots, do we have anything else? We do. I have those to put on, but I can't yet. So I don't have any other daggers for Rokuro. But yeah, man, I, I, for the Tokyo Gold game, I was, um, it, it's got decent mechanics to it, like, like, I know a bunch of people will probably want a completely different type of gameplay system for it, but I think the gameplay system it had is pretty decent for it. It just that they didn't elaborate much on the game. Like, I think after the game released, I don't even think there was any updates after at all. No extra DLC content. Um, just, just, just nothing. And it, and it kind of sucks because it's just like you know, it's kind of one of those things where they just release it as a quick cash grab and nothing else. Because like Tokyo Ghoul and then Don Machi especially, we don't really have a good Don Machi game besides the Gotcha one right now, um, Battle Chronicle. And we, we need two really good games of Don Machi and, you know, Tokyo Ghoul. They really, really deserve it. But, like I said, for the Tokyo Ghoul, I'll, you know, be playing that at some point off and on, I trying to make progress and getting used my to flat. It. Used to what? Your powers. I think I finally got a handle on them in a way that feels right. That's good. Hopefully you won't faint anymore. Yeah. And I'll keep learning, too. I hope we can make this work out. Yeah, definitely. Fingers crossed. <laughs> What's wrong? Nothing. Jealous as hey! always. Hey! Oh, when Mongula. you and Eleanor made your pact together, she gave you a true name, right? Was it a good one? Uh... True name? What's that? It's a special name in the ancient tongue given to a Moloch as a necessary step in forming a pact with a human. I gave Bienfu the name Fushikas. It means thing. <laughs> That's pretty messed up. It's just my own little way of showing affection. So what kind of name did you get, Lafayette? I... Uh... What's the matter? She didn't give you a really weird name like Mogulu gave Bienfu, did she? If you're not happy with it, I can talk to Eleanor about it later. So go on and tell me- I'm fine with it. And I can't tell you anyway. Well, you don't have Dang. to get so worked up about it. A true name is not something a Moloch just casually divulges to others. They carry a special meaning to us. Speaking it to anyone other than our Pact Keeper carries a special meaning. Between comrades, it means we trust them with our lives. In other cases, it's... Practically a confession of love! You could have said something sooner, you know. Lafayette sets at a delicate age. The velvet getting him You should be more careful in the future. Oh, really? It's just another way of showing affection. 
jaggedless outfit for Luffy. Cool. Um, let's see, what does that look like? Fashion. Okay, just, you know, without the little thing in the satchel. Um, and without the collar. Hmm. Uh, I think I like the standard one, man. I think I think I like the standard. Yeah. We're close to the um I'll uh I'll say it after this. Dragon. <gasps> That's gotta be the demon Tabitha wanted us to know about. It's flying free, but could it still be a Therian? I just felt an Earth Pulse point. It's that way, somewhere near the top of that mountain. Let's okay. check it out. Now, this area is huge. Yeah, this is a. Uh... Pretty huge area, especially, you know, walking speed. But, um... Wow, that thing was fast. But yeah, as I said, um... Well, as I was about to say, um... This weekend, I believe, is the open network test for the, um, SAO Fracture Daydream. So, that's gonna be really cool. Everybody gets to try it. I already played the beta, so this is going to be, a, you know, a second try for me with, you know, improvements, of course. So that's going to be interesting not hurt, to see. Are you? No. And, of course, the items that you get in it will carry over to the um, full game, which is nice. So everybody can kind of get a little, a little edge, you know, for whenever they actually play the game. Won't be anything big, probably. I don't even know what the high, highest like difficulty thing will be that we can do in it but you know you'll at least get something for playing will need to be especially the accessories as well since bosses can have um you know accessories like skull reaper you can get his head and uh wear that looks derpy but still cool nonetheless that that is a feature I did nice. good, didn't I? Equipment mastery. I'll put the poison one on you. I don't think we have a chance. On a side topic, been um, been watching video more like more videos of you know Minecraft hey, or mods right? because um, I, I don't I don't know I just had the urge to really just watch them and see kind of what's new because I haven't really watched anything since like the like whenever like the dweller the cave dweller was really a big hit so I ended up watching one called the boiled one and it's pretty interesting. Um, Pretty interesting kind of mod it is with the um, with the mob and how it works. It, I don't I don't know fully how it works, but with how what what I've seen, it seems pretty neat. And if you ever play like Minecraft with like I think it's a shader that makes it to where like the night time is extremely dark to the point where you just can't see anything. You most likely will not be able to see this thing at all. You'll hear it before you see it for sure, but like it, it's really tall, so you only really see its head. But the rest of its body below the head is just like pitch black, so you wouldn't be able to see anything. Well then, let's move on. So that makes it even more scary with that. Let's 
see, that goes to a lake road. We need to go that way. So we need to go over here. But let me go check this bottom part as well real quick. So I don't miss anything. Oh, and see, I think we're going to get a... Um, we're about to get a... We're about to get a mode of transportation that's going to make movement faster. And if I remember right, we get it from that um, apprentice guy that that old guy was talking about earlier. We get it from him. So that's going to be great because walking around like this, man, with this type of speed, it's 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 painful. It's very painful. So that will be nice once we get it, and we can also use it to get to areas that we never could get to before. And you'll end up seeing what I mean by that. Okay, we got a code red way over there. We actually need to go over here, but I think I'll make my way to the code red. I kind of just want to... I don't know, I kind of just want to speed up the video for this part, because I mean, it's not really going to be anything interesting other than just walking around, picking up everything, and searching for a chest. So, either that or I might just cut it. I, I don't know. But, um, yeah, uh, we got six chests around here. Quite a bit of souls. There's one chest right there. But yeah, for anybody who's still even listening right now, let me know what you guys are playing at the moment, you know? Whether you're seeing this video, you know, recently, or if you're seeing it way into the future, let me know what you guys are playing right now. What's, what's, what are you guys playing currently that's, like, big if you're, you know, playing a big game, or if it's, like, something that you're just into yourself that's not very a big game? Let me know. I'm curious about that. Like I've said many times before, I'm currently on the Cold Steel series, the second game. I recently just got to... As of last night, I got to the second act, and the game is is like it has different ch chapter parts compared to the first game, because the first game had you know chapter one, two, three, four, five, you know it had like that, but this game has chapter one, and then it has like, and then it splits into parts. So it's has you're in chapter one, then you go to part one, part two, part three, kind of like that. But um, it's only two chapters, which is pretty crazy to me. Two chapters, but you have, you know, tons of acts in between. So I would say it's still fairly the same length, um, if not just a tad bit shorter than the first game. Because currently I'm at like 20-something hours, I believe. It's been fun, though, but... I can definitely see people come like one complaint I see a lot with it is that um, some of the boss battles you do up in it it's you can't really win them like you can win but you can't win if that makes sense you can win and get like you know a little like a few points that add up to your you know end of the chapter where you can get rewards at the end of the chapter based on how much points you get but at the same time, you can't win. So it's like, you know. And it's been a bunch of the fights. Like, majority of the fights you do, you fight them. And the weird part is, the thing I don't like about it is that you fight them and you're not supposed to win. But if you lose before the enemy are, you know, does a specific move or before, you know, a cutscene triggers, you know, it still counts as a game over and I don't like that in games. It's not like a major deal for me with this one. I still like the game, but it's something I can definitely see why people will complain about it. 
Not a big deal for me, but I just don't understand why you would kind of make something like that if you're not going to win anyway. At that point, you might as well just not even fight them. But there's been really interesting characters up in there, some, you know, new characters that you can use a little bit. You get to see some new moves and all that stuff. So overall, a fun experience, just like the first game. Let's go ahead and fight this Cobra. We Hopefully we don't get... I, can't die here. I forgot I was at 1 HP. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, I completely forgot. Velvet was at 1 HP. Oh, well. What? Okay, yeah, I figured. Nice work, bro. Give me that. Okay, we got a little chain on that. Any other souls? Yep, there's one. Right for grants plus one maximum souls to characters wearing equipment that has been enhanced a combined total of 20 or more times cool I really should be upgrading gear to take advantage of this but I really don't want to upgrade stuff like that's something I kind of unless it's a game where you absolutely have to upgrade like immediately kind of like how AL was I I tend to hold off on this kind of thing or just typically never do it like on my main save file I don't think I have a single you know upgraded piece of gear on my characters definitely makes stuff harder because you're not getting benefits of you know some of these um, you know ventites acerites or whatever but it is what it is you know two more chests I don't know if one of them is that cat box that's being counted or not. Expedition, okay. It's kind of nice with the expedition as well since it's 30 minutes. Like, it tells me, it, it basically is my little timer of saying, like, hey, you know, it's been, you know, half of your recording already. Okay, so one more chest, which might be the cat chest that it's counting. Not sure. We'll see, though. But yeah, probably once I get towards, like, the final battle, though, that's whenever I'll probably upgrade. Because by then, we probably will have, like, the kind of best gear we can really have at that moment. And then once we hit, like, you know, the in-game type of stuff, then I'll, uh... Wow, he almost got me. I almost ran right into him. But then that's whenever I'll also, you know, upgrade other stuff at that point. Can I open? 
open that. No. 225 for that. Need less than 100. Might have some when we come back through, though. But yeah, you can see what I mean by, like, you know... It, it It's brutal when you get to this area whenever you can literally only walk. Even with the speed boosts that we have, it's still very slow. Would have been nice if we had a sprint button in this, like we have up in, you know, a rise at this point, but we did not. Yeah, I can really feel the Earth Pulse now. It's up above. Guess we're in for some mountain climbing then. Definitely something I would not do. Yeah, okay, so we'll we'll have enough souls whenever we go back down. some kind of little scene right over here. Can I walk to that first? Looks like I can. One chest over there too. I can't wait to take a good look around. Whoa, now that's what I call a view. I agree that it's beautiful, but don't leap about so much. You'll fall. Hmm. I can sense many earth pulses under this place. I figured you'd notice that. An intricate web of earth pulses crisscrosses the land under the Aldina Plains. Mountains like these would normally take tens of thousands of years to form, but these popped up in about a millennia. So the earth pulses have affected the land? Exactly. Long ago, people wielded arts that allowed them to manipulate the earth pulses and control the very land itself. How could arts like that exist? Pretty crazy. Perhaps they pushed against key points on the earth pulses? Like how acupressure can improve a person's blood flow. That's a rather forced comparison. But you may be right. Either way, those arts have been lost for eons. I'm impressed, Aizen. You know a lot about everything. Not at all. There's so much I don't know. For example, the name of these flowers. That's why I travel. To learn. Aldina alabaster grass. That's the name of this flower? Yes. A long time ago. My brother showed me a picture of it in one of his books. They're fragile flowers. They die quickly on their own. But if enough of them gather together, they can survive. Fields of them form beautiful white carpets of flowers. In some cultures, they symbolize kinship. The bonds between people. Kinship? Huh. I'll remember that. You and your brother taught me something new today. I'll never forget either. Pretty nice little insight you get. But yeah, Aizen, you would figure Aizen would know a lot anyway because he's a Moloch and they've pretty much been here, you know, quite a while. But, um, you know, like you said right there, even just a just a flower, he doesn't know and he's been traveling. Who we, I don't think we even know how long he's been traveling exactly, but for however long he's been traveling, he doesn't even know what this flower here. is. This is the Earth Pulse point I've been feeling. No Therian and no barrier. I must have gotten it wrong again. I wouldn't be so sure of that. That dragon could well have broken its barrier. Or it might have been too powerful for the Abbey to subdue. You could be right. After all, dragons make for the strongest demons. The problem is, we don't know if it's a Therian or not. Yeah. Let's stick with the plan and head to Stonebury to gather more information. only one here who thinks the real problem is how we're supposed to fight a frickin' dragon? It'll work out. It always works out.
And I imagine the winds are pretty strong up here, so it's like, why would you want to even do this? So now we gotta go to Stonebury, which, um, yeah, somewhere over here, one of these paths, probably that one above, I would imagine. So, yeah. Um, no soul back. But, yeah, generally, you're a figure, you know, Molochs and stuff. Um, would pretty much know everything since they they've always been around for long longer than us pretty much like even um even Maculu's friend the uh the norman i can't remember what her name was uh i can't remember what her name was but um the one that was helping us, you know, decipher the language. She, she's been around for so long and she still doesn't even really understand that language. Which, it's a hard language to, you know, figure out for sure. But even though she's been around for so long, she still doesn't really know. Does this go to Starmander? It does. They both lead to the same way. But look how huge this place is. This is just like... Like... One whole... Like giant area. And you have to walk it. I'm surprised with this big area there's only two chests though. Uh, we'll most likely have to go up there anyway. So I'll just grab that at a later point. But we've got enough souls now for that cat box that's back there, so next time we pass by that, we can grab it if we don't find another cat box by then. Also, we got a warp point, nice. A little something we can have. If I were a Bloodwing, where would I be? We'll start at the inn. It only makes sense. Yeah, so we already got a bunch of little pop-ups here to look at. Um, let's go ahead and start getting to work on them. A little sneaky uh, stat Raspberries, right strawberries, blueberries. They all grow in abundance around Stonebury. We even have a fairy tale about it. One day, the ground was covered with so many fallen berries, they all became stones. Stone berries? Is that how the town got its name? The spelling has changed some, but yes. Berries are an important part of this village. We harvest local berries to make jams, pastries, gels, and all sorts of sweets. Berry-flavored gels! I've never had one. We've exported our jam and fruit for a while now, but our raspberry gels are still being perfected. Aw, oh, rats. Are the vegetables growing in that field special too? I don't think I've ever seen anything like them before. You've got sharp eyes, but that's right. They're a rare species of wild potato. They're red and they're called radish bells. Radish we bells. discovered them in the mountains nearby. Sadly, the potatoes are actually highly poisonous. Really? They look so good. They do, but the skin and the sprouts are toxic. If you aren't careful when removing them, it's poisonville for you. Deadly poison aside, they're sweet, fluffy, and go great with butter. And when they're fried nice and crispy, they're the best. So just skin them and sell them. What's the problem? Yes, we've thought of that, 
But the way they are now, you have to peel off quite a bit before you get to the edible part. Peel one as big as your fist, and all you get for your trouble is a bit of meat the size of an egg yolk. That's why we're selectively yeah, breeding them. That's not worth it. One day, they'll have only a thin layer of poisonous skin. Why not breed them to get rid of the poison altogether? With no poison, bugs will eat them, and they'll be more vulnerable to cold and heat. With potatoes, as with people, getting rid of everything harmful isn't always for the best. Hmm. Little interesting insight on that. What do you have to say? Yay! I found so many blueberries! What are you gonna do with all those? Make jam? I'm going to feed them to my chickens. That way they'll lay eggs I know with her voice yolks. actor. I love her voice what? actor too. You know that won't work, right? It sure will. The color of yolks change depending on what a hen eats. My grandma taught me that. Hmm. Actually, we always feed our chickens corn. Is that why their yolks are yellow? What are you gonna do with purple eggs anyway? Tourists are coming from the capital again, right? I bet they've never seen purple eggs, so I figure I can sell them for a lot. <gasps> Maybe I can even make our village famous! You've thought this out, but will they really sell? You know what they'd make, right? Purple fried eggs, purple omelets, purple, purple omelets. egg fried rice. Ugh. Hey, would you want to eat a purple omelet? S strange things sell, right? You don't have to be so mean just because you can't think of a better idea. Oh, sorry. Here, let me help you. Fine. Go catch a whole barrel full of jewel beetles. If we feed them to my chickens, we'll get eggs with yolks like shining jewels. I really wouldn't want to be your chickens, but... Okay. What a carefree village. But you know, this is what really makes humanity amazing to me. Attempting the impossible, reaching for the stars, just as a matter of course. Aye. Though we may stumble countless times on our way, we can achieve anything we put our minds to. Attempting the impossible, huh? That's all well and good, but there are some lines that should never be crossed. Purple eggs. Purple eggs. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. And when you look at it, this village is extremely small. Like, one, two three four only four houses and then just these little fields like very small village also yep cat box i figured so we will not be opening that other one back there the water what around here is ideal for producing wine and spirits i've been thinking about fermenting something new what will you make this region's specialty is berries so a berry wine hmm but the chilly air and level of humidity here should be just right for making an amber draft, don't you think? Considering the geography around here, the water must contain a high mineral content. If you use it to make a rice wine, the taste will be unique. I've considered all those options, but I must create something that can surpass my greatest rival, Sleeping Princess. But that's nearly impossible to make. <laughs> exactly. Not an easy task, to say the least. Sleeping Princess is made by filling an emerald cask with water from an enchanted mountain spring and sitting it in direct sunlight for seven years. Seven the water's years? magic causes it to change color each year. How does that when just not get dirty? When it reaches the same deep green hue of the cask, it's ready. Solar fermenting, huh? It won't be easy to surpass a marvel of the winemaking world like Sleeping Princess. True. But I've finally found it. The ultimate stone. A gemstone? Will you make a cask from it? That would just make it an imitation. No. What I found can only be called a natural rock filter. You're filtering wine with a rock? Deep in the heart of these mountains, I found a stone that absorbs liquids. I tried using it to filter a berry wine. The taste of it was unbelievably crisp and bright. It preserved the luscious richness of the berries while adding a clarity that left me breathless. I call it pure land wine. There is no better. May I have a taste? 
Uh, my apologies, but it took me ten years to make a single thimbleful. I drank Dang that thimbleful for my tasting. It'll be about fifty years before I can make a decent batch. I doubt I'll see a full bottle in my lifetime. Fifty years, huh? Meet you back here then? I've never been so glad not to meet, meet you. Meet you back here then. Dude, Rokuro. Meet you back here then. <laughs> oh my god. Makes me actually wonder at the end, do they actually come back? Never tried, I think I've tried a sip of wine before. The kind I tried, not really to my liking. I was on my way home from a trip to Logan's, so, not crossing sure if I really the Aldina would Plains be into wine. when I saw it. Rain was pouring as if from buckets, and the wind was so strong I could hardly stay on my feet. From the vast darkness of the sky, a monster of tremendous size descended, like the essence of the storm itself. A huge flying demon? At that moment, a group of exorcists leapt out from their hiding spots and began to battle the demon beast. But it met their swords with its fearsome horns, and a swipe of its tail threw the noble exorcist back. Horns? And a tail? Where did the demon go? I couldn't tell you. I was so Side frightened, quest? I ran away and never looked back. I hope the Abbey can get rid of it, but the beast took out three exorcists with a single blow. Come to think of it, another person was there too. He faced the demon and told it to stop. Zavid. If you're going to the Aldina Plains, you'd better be careful. So a demon there, and Zavid. 200, let's go ahead and open that. Void Norman hat and a Norman suit. Is this our first Norman? No, okay, it's not, because we got one on Velvet before. But now Aizen has one. <laughs> oh man, Aizen just looks so weird with this stuff, man. So weird. Don't think anybody, yeah, nobody else has got anything else new. Well, besides Lafayette, just recently, but other than that, nothing new. Stoneberry hasn't had much luck growing just yet. But this pioneer town has a lot of potential. Trees grow well here, and the lumber is of great quality. Oh, we're also close to the quarries, so stone isn't a problem. As long as the demons are contained, this country will rebuild. The need for stone and lumber will soar. Best of all, this area is quiet, has beautiful lakes, and is a perfect place for a craftsman like me to work. And why settle for anything less? I do feel that you might be a bit short-handed here. It's hard to build without manpower. You're right. We need something to attract yeah, new settlers. Lot. Maybe some sort of specialty item? Is there any fruit or vegetable that can only be found around here? There is a type of potato called the radish bell that we grow, but it's got a few, uh, <laughs> quirks. If you want to attract people, you should just ring a bell. Come to Stonebury, where the money grows on trees. Hmm, a bell tower, huh? That might actually work. We can even use local stones for the bell. The Stonebury Stone Belfry. It won't work. Huh? Try hitting a rock. Doesn't ring. Ah, oh, how could I have missed that? I'm still such a novice. My master taught me better than this. Think before you build. That's what he always said. I need to do better and not sully his name. I guess he's the apprentice we heard about. Sounds like it. It sounds like he, he, he uh, Tim. Sneaky chest. That's all the chests in the area. Now, let's go to the end. Zavid. Zavid. Well, hello, sailor. One of the best soundtracks playing too. Are you waiting for someone? Nope. Just saying a prayer for someone. 
someone? Let's go. Clearly, there aren't any blood wings here. You're just going to leave? I'm right here. Everybody has times they need to be alone. You the man, Aizen. You the man. Fee. Right. Coming. What do you think he was praying about? Well, for one thing, he was drinking a bottle of Thorny Forest. Oh my! The drink you share with your special someone when you're going to be married for life! How romantic! But getting your hands on that stuff is no small feat. I can only hope I'll get a chance to taste it someday. That must have had an important meaning for Savid. That's why you left him alone. Don't read too much into it. You're Velvet, right? Huh. You must be the one who's seen the demon we're after. We saw a big snake-looking dragon fly over on the way here. Is that what you saw too? Yes, that's the one. It nests at the top of the mountain in Aldina Plains. We went to look ourselves. No dragon. It only returns to its nest on rainy days. Rainy days, you say? What a huge coincidence. Oh, just look at what you went and made the weather gods do. This doesn't bode well. Not at all. Thanks. We'll give it another shot. I've never seen these people have umbrellas. So do they just get wet? Like, look at this. They're just standing here. Like, no umbrellas? This is the first time we've seen Zavid in quite a while, too. I believe the last time we saw him was either at the Exorcist Tower or it was at that um, one hey village. There. Our meeting like this must Transportation. Be meow. We're in a hurry. Save it, cats. All the better, meow. I've just stumbled upon a perfectly nifty piece of stone just for you. What's it for? <gasps> That's not a geo board, is it? Bingo! I dug it out of some ruins, Meow. They were made by Norman Meowney years ago for surfing along Earth pulses, but I can't use it, so I figured I'd pawn it off on someone else who could, Meow. Wait, Norman made this? That doesn't exactly inspire confidence. Don't be so mean! We're capable of exceptional things! Uh, sometimes. When a Norman speaks their own name, the board springs to life and whisks its masters away at top speed. They'll even plow right through weak demons. You can say it's our masterwork, even if we sort of stumbled on it by accident. Huh. Well, then I apologize. So we can ride this as long as we have Bianfu with us, right? Well, kind of. Do you have to use your true name to activate it? Not my true name, no. My Norman name. Wouldn't that what just is be Mienfu? No. Norman have a separate name that goes something like Norman so-and-so. It's almost more a title than a name. Often the name has something to do with what they're good at. Something like Attack, or Chain, or Aqua. Right. You could say names like Bienfu and Grimoire are more like stage names. Grimoire, that's what I actually what don't know Bienfu's Norman name, but I can't wait to find out. What is your name, Bienfu? Uh, Come on out with it. We're in a hurry. Norman Brave. <laughs> Norman Brave. Whoa, look at that! Wait, Bienfu... Your Norman name is Brave? <laughs> that is so deliciously absurd! Why do you think I've never told you before, Bien? At least the board works, Meow. And if we get on this board, it'll move us around? Well, 
Um, about that. The board propels itself by pushing against Earth Pulse flows. To do that, the board needs information on the flows. But this one here's a completely blank slate, Meow. First, you need to find the geo trees in each area. They serve as a conduit between the surface land and the Earth Pulses, Meow. Once you've actually located a geo tree, you can record that area's Earth Pulse data into your geo board, Meow. Got it. This area's geo tree is right over there, Meow. All right then. So nice. long as we find more geo trees, we'll be able to use the geo. Oh, board I've been to looking forward to this quickly. moment forever. Now we can actually have speed. So, like I said, each area has, you know, its little geo tree. Put it in the board, and you can use the board to get around. Much, much quicker. And like she uh, said as well, you can, you know, get to area right here. You can get to areas where you normally couldn't before. And enemies, I don't know if it does it for every enemy or if it's like, you know, something like you have to be a higher level than the enemy. But it can kill them. So Geoboard, you can defeat enemies under a certain level without starting an encounter, yeah. But you won't get rewarded with XP or gold, so. So this is the geo board. You can um, use the left stick and the right stick to uh, move it around. Pretty well, cool. Well, that's going to come in handy. Yeah, and it's a lot of fun to ride too. I could get used to this. <sighs> I'm so worn out. I feel like I had to sprint the whole way here. Huh. <laughs> Seems like operating the board saps a lot of energy from Bienfu. Even still, this board gives us a strategic advantage. Brave here will just have to bear a little exertion now and then. Yeah, Brave. Buck up. I believe in you. Be brave. Ah! <laughs> Be brave. The nice rare artwork that we ever get. Um, we will go down this way since we're already over here. But yeah, so much better, man. It, it does suck that it takes this long to get to, you know, a faster travel method. Because all you got is the, you know, walking speed stuff, which really... I mean, it makes a difference, but at the same time, it doesn't. Whenever you hit areas like this, or areas that are just, you know, have many parts to them, like the cave we were at with Kuragane. So, sucks that it takes literally, what, what are we at, 25 hours now, just to get this? So, overall though it's so much better now that we've got it look at how much we've already covered compared to walking we just made it halfway through this little area in less than a minute just with this so amazing though i don't know if we can kill an enemy with it or not though probably find out once we get up here a little bit more. Expedition, cool. I knew this would be Okay, so we got another Scout. place. Probably what I'll do is take out this dragon and then that'll probably be it for this video since we're on time right now. Go ahead grab those real quick. I don't think we have a chance. Didn't look like it worked, so. You won't get any nice. your compassion from me. Don't think we've gotten any other masteries. We have, okay.
did we get? No, no new. All right, so that's everything. Which, I mean, we'll still have to walk in areas to, you know, get the geo tree. But once we get the geo tree that's there, it's, you know, smooth sailing after that. And then just use the board. There it is. Look at that, man. Beautiful. It looks so deadly. And just check out how much malevolence it's putting out. Which means it's not a Therian. Let's retreat. We've got no reason to pick a fight with something we can't handle. I do. Oh, you're up for it? What? What are you doing? She's right. Fighting this creature is a good way to end up dead. Why are you being oh, so loud? Uh, sorry. Too late. Well... No turning back now. Beautiful. Shinlong. This wasn't part of the plan. Yeah, okay, training like so. this doesn't come around every day. Be on your guard. One wrong move and you're done. Probably the biggest enemy in the entire game we fight besides that um, Kraken enemy that we fought earlier. Like, you know, towards uh, Kamawano's temple. Whenever we first ran into her. How much HP does this thing have? 90,000? Wow, level 62 too. Surprise is kind of not, like not just outright killing us. Can't win against it. Yep. This one definitely puts up a better fight than your average demon. Is there any hope of actually defeating this thing? I'll do whatever it takes. That's my way. Zabit! <laughs> and he punches him a second time, dude. Yeah. See you're out for blood, as usual. You knew, didn't you, Eisen? Out of my way. What? Are you protecting the dragon? She's not a dragon! Huh? Back off. Or I'll make you back off. Damn, it got away. <sighs> that hurts, babe. And here we hadn't seen each other in so long. Hold it. Is that dragon... someone you knew? I told you, she's not a dragon. <sighs> so, 
it's it Moloch, for sure. It seems I'll check sure. out my pecs, and the dragon have some kind of close ties. Did I hear you right? We're talking about a dragon here. I know what I said, but how could that be? When Malachim are tainted by malevolence, a dragon is what ultimately results. We've seen that before. So you're saying that dragon was a Moloch Zavid once now? She must be who he was praying for back in town. Yeah, most likely. But do Malachim put out malevolence like humans do? No, not by themselves they don't. But if one remains in contact with humans or demons who do, it will eventually taint her and she will become a dragon. What about you, kiddo? You feel anything weird after you got thrown into the Earth Pulse at the Empyrean's throne? I did, yeah. Can't say I'm surprised. The air there was thick with malevolence being sent on its way to Enominat. If I'd stayed there, I might be a dragon too. Is having a vessel not enough to prevent a Moloch from transforming? A vessel can reduce the effect, but not eliminate it. By stripping their Molochim of consciousness, the Abbey Exorcist seemed to be able to inhibit the transformation. But nothing in this world is guaranteed. Can a dragon ever be changed back into a Moloch? Nope. Just like with demons, there's no going back. Do they still hold on to some part of who they were? You saw that dragon. What do you think? Well, that's... But Zavid still won't kill it. Must be his creed at work. Aizen, listen. Whatever business you and Zavid have with that dragon, I don't care. Do what you have to. But I won't tolerate you getting the rest of us involved in it again. Do I make myself clear? You've got it. Good. Now, let's get back to the Therian hunt. We'll regroup in Titania. If what Aizen said is true, then could I wind up as a dragon someday? Or Aizen too? I don't... I don't know. So a little something else we learn about Molochs. You know, if they're exposed to malevolence long enough, they can ultimately turn to a dragon, so... Any dragons, like that pure dragon we pretty much saw, and then like ones we've seen in the beginning, um, we know that they're Molochs. So, interesting way we can find that out. Also, sneaky chest, man. But, with that being said, that's going to be it for this one. We managed to get to this whole area get that explored see some little stuff about stoneberry we got the geo board now finally and we saw zavid again learned a little bit more about him and like i said we just learned that monologues you know exposed for too long they can ultimately turn into a dragon so this earth pulse point was a bust no therian here so we will Next time, we will be going back to Titania, or Titania, whatever they called it, whichever way, I don't really care, but we'll be going back there to find out where the next point is going to be that we go to. So with that being said, that's going to be it for this one, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.